Hey there guys, today I'm going to tell you how to brine salmon or trout using a dry brine in preparation for smoking. And then I'm going to do a second video, I'm going to show you how to actually smoke salmon or trout using the Big Chief Smoker. It's a very simple and affordable smoker and all you need is to set aside an afternoon and you can cook up your own delicious smoked salmon or trout. So to begin with, you need to use a good quality uh, salmon or trout or any other oily fish too like whitefish also works really well for this you can even smoke uh, tuna and tuna bellies but what you do need to do first is you actually need to freeze the meat that you're going to smoke now this seems counterintuitive to using um, fresh meats uh, but the reason is is when you freeze the meat it actually breaks up and fractures those cells and allows the brine to penetrate the salt and sugars to penetrate and pull the moisture out and actually set up the meat better for smoking. So throw your meat in the freezer for a few days if it's fresh before you smoke it. Today I'm going to use some uh, fresh caught uh, schnook and coho salmon from Barkley Sound on the west side of Vancouver Island. Uh, they've already gone into the freezer and come back out and I've thawed them. Um, you really want to use higher quality meats. A lot of people will try and smoke um, like spawned out fish and things like that but, because it does in fact mask the flavor but if you take really high quality meat and smoke it you're going to get even better quality uh, smoked taste. So uh, I highly recommend using uh, higher quality firmer meats if you can. Okay let's get started. So here I have my salmon fillets and now I need to slice these up. I want to go about an inch to an inch and a half thick. Uh, if you leave bigger pieces then it's harder for the dry brine to penetrate the meat. So I like to try and just cut it like this across uh, into more manageable pieces. This also allows the smoke to have a bigger surface area to attach to. and. I'm looking for pieces like that right there. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly do that for the Chinook. For the Coho I might actually go a little bit wider simply because the fillets are a little bit uh, thinner but not too much. Okay so let's talk about the dry brine itself. This is actually the easiest part of the recipe. Um, and all you have to do is follow this simple rule, which is three parts brown sugar. Here I'm using a dark brown sugar. You can use light brown if you like. Three parts brown sugar to one part non-iodized salt. You can use either canning or pickling salt or kosher salt. That's all you need is to get those two. You can actually just use this brine without any other additives and it will turn out pretty darn good. Just mix the sugar and salt together. Uh, very well and then you'll layer your fish in that which I'll show you in just a sec. But I like to spice things up a little bit. Um, I might add a couple tablespoons of soy sauce to give it a little bit more of a kick and then there's a whole bunch of different spices that I like to use like dill weed, ginger powder, let's see what else we got here. Black pepper if I want to kick it up you can use cayenne pepper or red pepper flakes. Uh, garlic powder is also another good one. Mustard powder complements salmon very well and lemon peel also helps out too, especially um, with fish that have a little bit stronger fishier flavors. Say they might be a little bit freezer burn or something like that. The acidity in that will help a little bit. So in general, I'm only going to add one to two tablespoons of each of these ingredients. This, if you really want to kick it up, you know, two tablespoons of crushed red pepper or cayenne pepper is really going to give you a spicy cure. Um, or you can dial that back as much as you want or completely leave it out. So let's go ahead and get this brine mixed up and then we'll get the salmon into the dry brine. Okay, so we'll go ahead and add the brown sugar in there and the salt. And we want to mix this up really well so that they're evenly blended. Break up those big chunks if you can of the sugars and salt want a nice good dry mix an even distribution okay next I'm gonna go ahead and add my preferred ingredients which is 
a tablespoon of dill weed, about the same amount of mustard, go a couple tablespoons of garlic powder, one tablespoon lemon peel, and black powder or black pepper, <laughs> black powder. This is going to be explosive. All right, go ahead and mix that up. And that dry brine mix is ready to go. Okay, now when we're going to brine the salmon, you want to do this in a non-reactive container. That is either glass or plastic. Um, I know a lot of folks have um, actually used their crispers. They'll pull the crisper out, take all the vegetables out of it, and clean it, and use that to dry brine in. Uh, it does make a sugary, salty mess, um, so make sure it's not something um, that's going to leak. All right, so the first thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and put a little bit layer of that brine across the bottom, just covering the bottom of your container. And then you want to add your first layer of fillets. And you want to leave a little bit of gap between them so that the different brining mixes can get down inside there. So I got that laid in there. Now I'm going to lay in some more dry brine. You don't have to like drown it, but you want a good even coating on it before you add the next layer. And you want to keep doing this working your way upwards uh, till you have all of your salmon covered. So next you want to put the salmon in the dry brine in the refrigerator for about 24 hours. If you're doing thinner cuts of fish like kokanee or smaller trout, 12 hours is probably sufficient unless you want a candied version of the trout or kokanee. If you want a candy or make a jerky like salmon, then you might want to go up to 48 hours. Otherwise, shove it in the fridge and uh, close the door and let it rest. Alright, now that it's been in here 24 hours, we're going to pull it out. Okay, so when we pull it from the fridge, um, after being in the brine for 24 hours, it's going to feel very firm to the touch. Almost jerky-like. And it'll be in this soupy mixture. This is all the moisture um, that's been drawn from the salmon. And uh, the salt and sugars have penetrated the meat. So now what we need to do is pull these out and put these on racks to dry and form what's called the pellicle. Um, but we'll need to scrape away any sort of crystallized sugars um, or salts that we might see on there. Especially the meat towards the bottom will tend to have some of it. So after you remove the fish from the dry brine in the refrigerator, you need to let it air dry. You can put that, I like to put it on these trays here and I'll put a little bit of canola on there so they don't stick. I'll wipe off most of that salt and sugar like I showed you and then I'm going to let them air dry uh, until they have a tacky sticky t surface on them. Um, you don't want it to be wet, you want it to be sticky. That's called the pellicle and it's absolutely critical in getting that smoke to bind to the fish during the smoking process. Um, it can take one to two hours for that to form in drier climates at room temperature. When there's lower humidity, it might take several more hours in more humid climates. So after I got that pellicle formed, your fish are ready for smoking. Now, there's a bunch of different smokers on the market, so in this next video that I'm gonna post a link to at the end of this one, I'm gonna talk about how to smoke them in my Big Chief smoker behind me here. It's a very simple, economic, smoker that I like to use. I use this in combination with my oven to produce uh, consistent results time after time and easily. Um, if you have a different smoker you'll have to follow that smoker's directions. Uh, if you like this video be sure and hit that like button and hit that subscribe button uh, so that you can keep up to date with the content that I'm producing here at Spilt Milk Productions. As always, I'm going to put links to any of the products that you see here below. If you have any questions about dry brining your trout or salmon, just let me know in the questions in the comment section below and I'll give you a hand. 
Otherwise, I'll e either see you in the backyard next time or out on the water. Have a good one, catch lots of fish, and enjoy your catch at the dinner table. See you guys.